Yes, Lord, and those that are listening to us in virtual land, put your prayer request in the comments, and we'll be sure to pray. Let every heart pray. Christian Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise you for your greatness, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together one more time to delve into your word. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy, your grace, and your love, and your kindness. We ask you, Lord, that you Look upon each and every request that's been made known. We ask you, Lord, that you save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. Remember those that are sick and afflicted going through in their bodies. Remember those that are in the hospitals, Lord. Uh, remember the Jamil in a special way. Touch his body, Lord. Save his soul. Deliver him in the name of Jesus. Remember Minister Quinn's body, Lord. Touch his body. I said for healing and deliverance. Bless our children. Bless even our enemies, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that you save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. We pray, Lord, that you bless our Bible study on tonight. Let your word have its free course. Let the Spirit of God teach us and lead us and guide us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Praise him. Uh, we want to certainly uh, go into uh, the book of Jude tonight. Book of Jude tonight has one chapter, and um, the prayer request, uh, the part B of the prayer request of the evangelist Arrington, let me know that we're in the right spot, and his confirmation. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. The Lord always confirms himself. Thank you, Jesus. And, you know, he uses whomever he wants to use, so we thank God for that. And as we uh, get into the book of Jude. Uh, it's only one chapter, one book. And um, I'm going to ask um, Crosby, she begin to read for us, uh, beginning 
at that first verse. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and Paul. Read. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Amen. This, this particular epistle of Jude um, uh, was written uh, to the saints, to the body of Christ, because he saw some things that uh, needed to be addressed and needed to be addressed with some urgency. And uh, Jude, he's identifying himself, uh, first of all, as a servant, a bond servant of Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul, he identified himself as a bond servant and Peter. And that connotation means that, you know, that they were yoked together with Christ to serve him. And uh, uh, meaning that they were his slaves, slaves of Jesus Christ. Then he identifies himself as the brother of James. And James was a, a prominent member in the uh, early church. He was the one that kind of settled a dispute what they had uh, about uh, circumcision and uh, talking about uh, offering up idols, unto, offering up sacrifices unto idols. Amen. And he settled the dispute uh, concerning that. And uh, Jude is writing those names in there to give his epistles some weight and authority. Uh, Jude, because he was the brother of James, is also uh, the brother of Jesus. They were actually uh, related to Jesus. And uh, so, you know, uh, uh, he was giving his, his epistles some weight as, as far as uh, the authority of it. And uh, Jude is a book that's, that's straight up gives the information straight up, straight to the point. And uh, can you read that first verse again? Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, and brother of James, uh -huh. to them that are sanctified by God the Father. Now notice, he's saying, he's writing this to the saints, those that have been set apart, amen, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and, and living according to the word of God. And been set apart by God the Father. Read. And preserved in Jesus Christ and all. Now preserved, that's relating to being kept. Amen. Being kept by God. Being kept by the, the uh, Jesus Christ. And called into the body of Christ. The ecclesia have been called out of the world. This is a dynamic, if you really dissect it, a dynamic introduction. Because uh, uh, he's letting you know that I'm writing to the saints that have been preserved uh, in the body of Christ and called uh, 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 in a part of God's ecclesia, those that have been called out of the world. Now, the reason why he's stressing this is that, that there's uh, a lot of teaching that was going on back then, dealt with once saved, always saved, and you can do anything you want, and say anything you want, and take advantage of the grace of God. And that's what he's after. That's what he's after. Those that would take advantage of the grace of God. Amen? You got a lot of people out there, amen, that wants to take advantage of the grace of God. I'm sure that in your Christian walk, you talk to people that, that, that uh, water down this gospel in this respect. Well, you know, uh, God knows uh, that, that we're not perfect and that uh, we're going to sin and, and sin is all right as long as you confess it. You know, y'all talk to people that say that, right? That, that we all, we all, you know... Uh, just hanging on by the grace of God, and uh, whatever happens, it happens. God knows. Just, just, just go throughout the day. Ask God to forgive you and keep on moving. You know, uh, never, never.
putting in the part wherein God wants you to strive for holiness, strive for righteousness, and resist temptation, resist evil. And, and this was a, a doctrine that was being taught that he was after. And that same type of mentality, that same type of doctrine is with us even on today. It's with us even on today. This epistle was written uh, in the early church. And now we're in the latter days. And we're still dealing with these types of issues wherein we need to be reminded, amen, of our common salvation. We need to be reminded of, of what we have and what God has given unto us and more so to look out for those that are trying to water us down. Amen? To water us down. All right, y'all with me? Amen. All right, now notice verse number two, what does he say? Mercy unto you uh -huh. and peace and love be multiplied. All right, so now he's, he's finishing up his introduction. He's saying mercy be unto you and, and mercy follows peace and notice, and he says, love be increased. Amen. That's, that's the life of a saint. Uh, the, the fruit of a child of God should be mercy. Amen. The fruit of a child of God should be pursuing peace. Amen. The fruit of a child of God should be love multiplied. Amen. That's our fruit. Hallelujah. All right. Verse number three. Beloved. All right, so now he's laying out uh, the reason why he's writing this particular epistle. Because he's literally after false teachers, uh, people that are teaching false doctrines. And uh, more so now, uh, uh, and well, I'm, I'm, I'm just speaking of Christian ministries. I don't know what necessarily goes on in other churches. But... Uh, more so now, the Lord is saying, watch out, uh, you're not going to uh, generally uh, get somebody to come in to the church and tell you uh, that the doctrine that you've been teaching and preaching is, is wrong. Uh, but you will get somebody that will pull you in a corner uh, and, and talk to you, or you will, uh, 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 if you're listening to evangelism on the uh, uh, the web or, or YouTube or, you know, uh, people you may run into, amen, people that may have some influence with you. You may hear them uh, uh, water this thing down, amen. So you've got, to, you've got to watch and pray, amen. Be on alert uh, for people that are uh, 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 teaching and saying things that are contrary to righteousness. So good sound doctrine. In other words, some radars should go up. Red flags should go up when you when you hear people say certain things that don't line up with the word of God. All right, read that verse again. He says what? Beloved? Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the coming salvation. Uh-huh. Now it seems like that he's he's reiterating something that he's already written because he's using a lot of past tenses. Uh, so he's saying, uh, when I have gave all diligence, and that word diligence there, it means eagerness. Amen? Because Jude saw something that, 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 that wasn't right. He saw something that was going on in the body of Christ uh, that was being taught that, that caused him to eagerly, when he's talking about diligence, he's talking about eagerly uh, writing unto the saints. Now, why would he uh, be in such a hurry to say giving all diligence or eagerness because he realizes that if he didn't cut it off at the root quick, it would grow. Uh, it, would, it would manifest. Uh, we've got to watch uh, what, we're, what we're doing. Uh, whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Uh, whatever you sowing, it gonna, it's going to eventually manifest. Amen? 
So, so that which is uh, not right, you got to cut that thing off quick. Amen. So, with all diligence, with all eagerness, before it takes root. Amen. And that's what he was after. Some false doctrine that was being taught. Uh, uh, he wanted to get at it before it took root. Amen. Y'all with me? All right. So he says, I gave all diligence to write unto you about what? And, and what he's talking about there is, is simply the, the, the salvation, the doctrine of Jesus Christ. The death, burial, resurrection, and, and all that goes into it about living holy. Amen? Thank you, Lord. I'm writing to you about the common salvation. Read. It was needful for me to write unto you uh -huh. and exhort you yeah. that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Amen. And, and that once delivered to the saints, he's referring to all that the apostles taught, all that Jesus taught. Uh, when Peter opened up the doors of the church on the day of Pentecost, amen, he taught a, a preached a beautiful sermon, and, 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 and souls got saved. And then when the blind, uh, uh, the man that was uh, laid at the gate lame, uh, and, and, and he preached the sermon, and more people got saved. Amen? And, and so forth and so on. Those that uh, rolled this doctrine out, uh, uh, the, the, the deacons and, and those that preached, and those that taught uh, of the common salvation, and, and they, they taught it, they delivered it to them. It's like even that Galatian church. You did run well, but what hindered you? Amen? That you should believe a lie. So, 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 so there was false doctrine even in that day that was going on, and there's false, doc false doctrine even in our day that is going on, that, that waters it down. Now notice what he said. Beloved, I, I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. Hey, notice he said it was needful, necessary. This Bible study tonight is necessary. Amen. It's needful. Amen. For me to write unto you and notice, to exhort you, amen, to encourage you, to advise you. Amen. God sends out warnings to his people, amen. We ought to take heed to the warnings that God sends, amen. Thank you, Lord. Have you ever thought about somebody and then you saw them, amen? Have, has that ever happened to you? You thought about somebody and then boom, they pop up. Thank you, Lord. And, and that's like a, 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 for lack of a better term, like a premonition. Amen? Uh, uh, God gives us these thoughts that come to our mind. And, and, and he warns us so that we can be careful. Amen? We can't eat every and anything. We can't sit under everybody's table. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And I can't, uh, uh, as strong as I may think I am, uh, something will attach. Uh, something will shake my foundation. Uh, cause me to wonder uh, about, about, about this great salvation. Y'all follow me? Thank you, Lord. We've got to be on guard. People, people are, uh, oh man, uh, what's that word? Uh, they, 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 they live to dispute the gospel. They live to dispute the word of God. Amen. They look uh, 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 for things that 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 uh, are vague in the scriptures, and then they they bring it to you and say, "Well, what what do you think about this?" Uh, and they, and if you don't uh, know the scriptures and able to line it up line on line, precept on precept, uh, then then they can throw it can shake your foundation. Amen. You can say, you know, uh, God, uh, one scripture. It talks about how, how, how God was dealing with a wicked king. And he said, well, I need me a lying spirit to go down into the, and be a lying spirit in the prophet's mouth. And then you think if you didn't know God being righteous and holy, you would think in your mind, well, well God, why, why are you setting this prophet up to be a liar? You know what I'm saying? Thank you, Lord. But, but you got to understand God. You know, all souls belong to God. He does what he wants. Amen. 
Thank you, Lord. And, 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 you know, if you don't know the word of God, then those things can trip you up. And there's people out there that search the scriptures just to trip you up. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Uh, to debate with you. Yeah. Huh? And Paul talked about that. He said, uh, don't go into genealogy, uh, debates, uh, 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 talking about the stars and all this other kind of stuff. You know, stick to the word. Uh, stick to the gospel. Now notice, read that verse again. We in James, I mean Jude, uh, chapter number, uh, was only one chapter, uh, verse number three. Read, what did you say? Uh-huh. When I gave all diligence to write unto you yes. on the common salvation, uh -huh. it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Now notice, his, his exhortation is the, the, the main point of this epistle. He's, he's advising us to be contenders. Amen? Contenders not against one another, but be contenders of the faith. Amen? That was once delivered unto us. Amen? And that faith is simply the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, defend that. Uh, defend holiness. Defend righteousness. Amen? There's a, there's a lot of people... And, and even ourselves, we can water this thing down huh? if we allow it. Huh? If we allow ourselves uh, uh, get involved in no harm things <laughs> uh, in our own mind. Literally disputing with the word of God. Huh? But he says contend for it because this thing is valuable. Why? Why is it valuable? Because it's the only thing that is able to save. It's the only thing that is able to deliver, to set one free. We've got to, uh, uh, Lord help me here, Holy Ghost. We've got to really have a, a strong desire huh, to go after what God has said. If there's no strong desire, then we can settle for everything and anything. In other words, if you don't have an appetite for this, uh, you've got an appetite for something else. Uh, and that, that something else will kill you. Uh, you've got to have an appetite for this. He said, blessed are ye that hunger uh, and thirst after righteousness. For you what? Shall be filled. If you don't, if you don't have an appetite for this, then you're going to be weak. Huh? People that lose their appetite, they die. Huh? They die. Uh, I'm sure you've been to the hospital and seen somebody on their deathbed, and once they stop eating, once they stop drinking, you know that the end is near. Huh? Once you stop uh, uh, contending for the faith, uh, once you stop having a hunger and a thirst, Oh my God, after this righteousness, uh, you in trouble. Uh, your end is near. The devil, he's wicked. Uh, the Bible says that he'll, he'll, he that let will let until he be what? Let out of the way. And then he takes people captive at his own will. Uh, in other words, he'll let you be weak, thinking you all strong. And then at a moment, where, where, where all influence or where, where, where he can get the biggest uh, bang for his buck, so to speak, he'll, he'll cash in on you. Huh? Cash in on you. Huh? You got to be watchful. Hey, you got to watch. You got to pray. Huh? I, I'm exhorting you. I'm encouraging you because what you have is meaningful. What you have is, is, is precious. <laughs> oh, hey, how many of you know you got something precious? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Whatever the enemy can offer you ain't worth this. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, no matter what the trial, the tribulation, or the hell you got to through, go through, this light of fiction huh, is just but for how long? A moment can turn to eternity, but it working for us. Uh, a far more exceeding and eternal way to go. I echo you. You echo. You don't want to lose out on this. Hey, hallelujah. I don't care if you go into this thing half vain or half whole. Uh, one arm, one eye, blind, triple, or crazy. You got 
to go in. <laughs> Hallelujah. By any means necessary. Amen. My God, my God, my God. I'm getting, I'm preaching to my own self now. By any means. He said, I exhort you. Now notice, he said you got to contend for the faith. Not, not contend against one another, but contend for righteousness, holiness, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the standard. Amen? The standard. Uh, we've got to bring back standards. Uh, uh, there's a standard when you walk with the Lord. Amen? There's expectation that he has for you. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Now notice. No, hey, glory. Notice what he said. He said, contend for the faith, which was what? Now, this was in the body of Christ at one time. Huh? And, and at one time, uh, the saints had all things common. Amen? They were all with one accord uh, in Christ Jesus. Huh? The church was growing. The church was multiplying. Amen? Huh? They, were, they were living this thing. Why? Because it was once delivered to the saints. Paul puts it this way. Call back the former days uh, when you were first illuminated. Uh, sometimes we get too educated. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. What I mean by that is, is that sometimes we think we know too much and don't know nothing. Uh, go back to the basics. Uh, go back to the basics. Uh, go back to the basics. Hold on. Now, thank you, Lord. Now, notice. Let's move on. Verse number four. But there are certain men, crept in unawares, who were before of old or ordained into this condemnation. Uh huh. Ungodly men. Yeah. Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Yeah. And denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, 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 Elder, I want you to read. My God, I better should have turned on some lights. I can't yeah. even see y'all. Turn, turn on some lights. Uh, uh, you not turn lights on, brother? Uh -huh. Oh, Jesus. You want to turn on? <laughs> All right, thank you, brother. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> we, we people of light. We people of dark. <laughs> I can't see y'all. I can't see y'all faces. I don't know if it's resonating. <laughs> But, but, uh, read that verse again, Pastor Doug. For there are certain men who have been unaware, uh -huh. who were before of all ordained to this condemnation. Yeah. Ungodly men, uh -huh. turning the grace of our God into less and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now notice, he said, oh, Jesus. I right, turn them the other way, brother. <laughs> turn, turn them the other way. Thank you. All right, read that again. First, verse number three. But there are certain men crept in unaware. All right, now notice he said there are certain men, certain men that crept in unaware. Who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. All right, they were they were for old. Condemn, uh, con, uh, ordained for this. Right. Now. All right. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Let me go get it. Let me go get it. I get it. All of them? We all good. Give God a praise. Yeah, how many? All right. 
All right. All right. Pat, uh, Elder, can you read that again? But there are certain men crept in unawares. All right. Who were before the old ordained to this kind of nation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, notice what he says. He says, for there were certain men that crept in. All right, that's, that sounds like the devil, don't it? Uh, he's, he's subtle. Uh, he's crafty. He's sneaky. Uh, so you got to watch out for people that's creepy. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Uh, they, change them, they change themselves uh, into angels of light. Amen? You meet people's representative first, and then they show you who they are. When they show you who they are, believe it. Amen? Believe it. <laughs> you follow me? So he says, now, uh, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before ordained to this condemnation. Now that's encouraging in this respect. It didn't take God by surprise. And the Lord knew that this was going to happen. Amen? He said in the last days, what's going to happen? Men going to be lovers of their own selves. Am I right? In the last days, perilous times shall what? Shall come. So this didn't take the Lord by surprise. It shouldn't take us by surprise. Why? Because these people were foreordained. Amen? Just like Pharaoh, foreordained. Huh? Just like Judas, foreordained. Amen? Unto this type of condemnation. So, so, so when it happens, don't let the church fall apart. When you see it happening, don't you panic, amen, and throw, throw in the towel or become discouraged uh, because these things have to come, amen? These things must come. What we see going on in the world about even homosexuality, it has to happen, amen? Uh, 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 truce breakers, covenant breakers, people killing and destroying themselves. These things are a part of the prophecy. Amen? Amen. Especially a part of the prophecy of the end times. Amen. So when they happen, uh, don't trip. Uh, don't get discouraged. Uh, don't think that the church is falling apart. It's not. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, in fact, he tell you when you see these things happening, look up. Uh, your redemption is drawing nigh. He says, when you see these things happening, encourage one another. Uh, that's what I'm doing to you today. I'm trying to encourage you. Uh, you, you in the eleventh hour. <laughs> uh, 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 what, what's that song? I forget how that song goes. He it says it's almost midnight, uh, and the cry is about to be heard. Uh, behold, the bridegroom coming. Have you any oil? Are you saved? Amen? Uh, it's almost midnight. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Uh, that, bad, that nice sermon that Paul preached, he didn't preach a sermon, he was right. He said, grab a board. <laughs> uh, uh, the ship breaking up, grab a board. Hold on. Uh, and, and, and notice what he said. He said in that, in that uh, book of Acts, he said, not a soul shall be lost. Amen. Think of yourself in that boat. Uh, and your soul shall not be lost. Just hold on. Amen. Hold on. Contend for the faith. Hold on. Fight for what you got. Amen. Uh, be steadfast. Be unmovable. Uh, always abound in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know your labor is what God in vain. Uh, not in vain in the Lord. Thank Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Be encouraged. Yes. Amen. Huh? Read that again, Pastor. Yeah, that's it. Alright, so certain people are going to creep into the church. Huh? Creep in into the church unawares. Meaning that uh, we don't think they're saintly uh, because we can we'll spot a wine nibbler, uh, a, a whoremonger. Uh, well, uh, but, but those that have transformed themselves, uh, those are the ones where we think it's all right, but all wrong. Uh, they'll creep in unawares. 
Read. Who were before of old uh -huh. ordained to this condemnation. Now, they were ordained for that. To try to shake the church. Huh? To, to shake it so that uh, uh, only they that are remaining will remain. Amen? <laughs> uh, notice, notice, notice what Jesus said. He said, I am the vine. Huh? And my father is what? The husband. He said, every branch that is in me that bringeth forth fruit, huh? he does what? He purges it. And, that, and the branch that doesn't bear fruit, he does what? He takes it away. That's why those people are creeping. Amen? To take away huh, those that are not bringing forth fruit. Y'all don't hear me. That's why they come in. Huh? He said, let the wheat and the tear do what? Grow together. Huh? So you got some wheat in the house and you got some tear in the house. Amen? But, but sooner or later, those that are just uh, 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 occupying uh, uh, are not really connected to Christ, uh, they're going to be taken away. And he sends in these folk to creep. Y'all uh, don't hear me. <laughs> he sent them in. Watch. Watch who you are uh, buddying up with. Watch who trying to gain your influence. Amen? Hallelujah. Especially new folk that come into your life. I know we say they was just with me for a reason and a season. God sent me some new people. Watch! Amen? Watch! Especially if they're selling, saying great swelling words, uh, complimenting you, uh, trying to give you this and give you that. Uh, if it's slowly uh, creeping in, you know Pastor Green ain't good anyway. You know, uh, you know, he, 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 ain't, he ain't right. You know, pointing out all my flaws. Y'all knew my flaws. <laughs> Thank you. You followed me? Huh? Thank you, Jesus. And, 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 and they tried to reiterate that, make it a big deal. Huh? To try to gain your attention. Watch. Amen? Amen, anyhow. Okay. All right, where we at? Now notice, he calls them ungodly. What verse she in? Four. All right, read. Ungodly men. Turning the grace of our God into lascivity. Now notice, ungodly people, they live their lifestyle without God. Yes. Amen. In other words, they're church folk. Amen. That, that, that know and understand the principles of God, but they live without, uh, they don't live the principles. Follow me? They live without him. Uh, in other words, God is not ruling over their life. Their, their, their belly is their God. Amen? They're, they're ruled by their own desires and their own lusts. Uh, and, 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 and if we were to go over to the, to the book of uh, uh, Psalms and read Psalm number one, uh, let's, let's read that just for uh, uh, clarification. Lord, I got to move on. Lord have mercy. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, uh -huh. nor standeth in the way of sinners, yes. nor sitteth in the seat of the scorner. Yes. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Yes. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Uh -huh. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Yes. Here we go. The ungodly are not so. People that live their life without God don't match up to what was read from verse 1 to that point. Read. But are un ungodly, the ungodly are not so, uh -huh. like the shaft which the wind drives away. Now notice, remember I gave you the, the analogy of ungodly people and, and, and ungodly people are the ones that he taketh away the vine, amen, and, and those that don't bear fruit, he taketh away, similar uh, uh, analogy, like the chat, amen, that the wind, spirits, 
Huh? Take them away. Now read. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. Uh-huh. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Now, here's why we came to this, part, this verse. I wanted to show you that there's a difference between ungodly folk and sinners. See that? He said, the ungodly are not so, but shall be what? Like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Those are people that are in the church that are not living by the word of God. Amen. Amen? Amen. Now notice what he says now. Read. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. Right? Now when the judgment comes, they think they're going to stand. But Jesus is going to say, depart from me, ye worker of iniquity, I never knew you. Amen. Haven't we preached in your name? Haven't we taught in your name? Get thee behind me. Follow me? Now read. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Now see, now he's making a distinction. A sinner is somebody that has never been saved. A sinner is not recognized as an ungodly person. Uh, but a sinner. There's a difference. Amen? A sinner is somebody that has never accepted the Lord. Huh? Never walked with the Lord. But an ungodly person knows. Huh? But chooses not to live. Amen? Y'all with me? Huh? You blessed if you hear these things and what? Do them. If you don't do them, you're ungodly. Uh, you're not a sinner, you're ungodly. <laughs> Y'all with me? Hallelujah, my God. All right, let's go back. Thank you, boy, I'm getting excited. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go back. Thank you. I want to be a saint. Come on now. What y'all want to be? Y'all want to be a saint, right? Um, so you got to do these things. Happy are ye if you do these things. Amen? Hallelujah. I don't want him to say depart from me. Oh, man. Can you just imagine on your deathbed, you died, you know, you thinking you're going home. <laughs> My God, you're going to the wrong home. You wake up and say, this is the wrong address. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. All right. All right, where we at? But there are certain men who have been unaware uh -huh. who are before all ordained to this condemnation. Yeah. They're ungodly men. Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Now notice, they're ungodly because they turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. And that, that deals with loose living uh, on the deplorable end of things. You follow me? Thank you, Lord. And, and, and one of the greatest things that God hates about People who teach false doctrine or, or people who influence others to do evil is because they, he hates it because they lead them in the wrong way. Amen. One of the greatest sins that God hates is people who influence other people to do evil, to do wicked. To live a wicked life. Amen? That's one of the greatest sins God hates. Amen? People that, 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 that teach. People that, that preach. People that influence others to do wicked. He hates that. Hates it. With a passion. Hates it. Man, Jesus, Jesus taught in, in, his, in his parable, he said, blessed are those that, that, that hear and do and teach others. And he said, they're going to be great in the kingdom. And he said, those that, that teach and don't do, they're going to be least in the kingdom. What he was really saying was, is that uh, people who teach and, and, and don't do it themselves, they're not even going to be in the kingdom. Amen? You got to watch. Look at the fruit that the individual is bearing. Watch. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Watch. All right, read. And deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. All right, now, 
Notice, they, they denied it. They denied the Lord God and they denied Jesus Christ. People who, who, who teach and preach and live their life as though Christ doesn't matter, huh? that God hasn't done anything, you got to run from them folk. Far away. Disassociate yourself with those people who do not accept the Lord Jesus Christ, but they're trying to teach you something. They're being, they're influencing you. You gotta watch out for family members. Yeah. Amen. Huh? Amen. That, that try to influence you. They ain't got no God in them. Amen. Huh? Amen. Wanna call you up on church night. Yeah. Huh? Bible study night. Yeah. Keep you away uh, from, from the word of God. Watch them. Amen. Bottom line, they ungodly. Huh? They're not, they not, they not talking about the Lord. I'm not saying don't have a relationship with Him, but watch that they don't bring sin in into your life. Huh? The, the latest con conspiracy theories huh? get you to think it. You follow me? Amen. Nothing to do with sound doctrine and righteousness, but they got your ear. They're influencing you. Make you paranoid. God don't want you being paranoid. <laughs> My God. All right, uh, are you evangelists? I was just thinking that you were saying that the Holy Spirit said those are all seducing spirits. Yes. <laughs> Bringing doctrines of devils. My God. Couldn't have said it more better. Seducing spirits. Amen. Watch out for them seducing spirits. We got to watch out for them, don't we? Yeah, we all do. Myself, too. Yeah, you follow me? Yeah. Music. Watch out for the music you're listening to. Oh, yeah. huh? Watch out for the stuff you hear. Oh, yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Especially if, if it's soothing to your spirit and ain't got no godliness in it, watch out for it. Yeah. Stuff is like that. Yeah. We still in the flesh. But we also in the spirit. But we're still in the flesh. Am I right? Water down stuff. They water down holiness, righteousness. Oh, uh, that's 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 Bishop Quinn. He ain't nobody. You ain't gotta listen to him. Huh? That's just Mother Mother Davis and Mother uh, uh, Tracy. You ain't gotta listen to them. They 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 just hanging around the church. They don't know nothing. Follow. You gotta watch, huh? Defend your brother. Defend your sister. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. You know, I, I used to, I used to, uh, <laughs> you know, in the family, you could, you could talk about the family members could talk about each other, but they didn't want people outside the family talking about. Them. I ain't saying that's good. Don't get me wrong. Because you know that can ruin somebody's complex too. But you know, don't let nobody talk about your family. Amen. Amen. And don't be, on, don't be a bandwagon. Amen. Don't jump on the bandwagon. Amen. Uh, you, 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 you know your, your family never crooked. But you know, doing some crooked stuff. You know, but you ain't got a cosign on it. Uh, amen. I just say, <laughs> just say, just pray for them, you know, and then, then flip the script, say, well, what are you doing? What stuff are you doing? I heard some stuff about you, too. You know, oh, they'll be quiet then. You know? Huh? Y'all with me? Yeah. Uh, first lady. We even tell them what would Jesus do, what Jesus did. Right. Absolutely. Cast the first stone. Cast the first stone. Nobody told no stone. Right. They walked away. What's in their blocks? Right. Absolutely. So, so you know, that's contending for the faith. That's contending for the faith. Amen. 
Notice, then B, oh, we got to hurry up. Uh -huh. I will therefore put you in remembrance, through, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Now, this is what I love about this epistle. Because he's talking about apostasy. Uh, apostasy is wherein you think you're living for God, but have no godliness. Follow me? You got a form of godliness, but you deny the power thereof. Yes. You got a reprobate mind. Yes. Amen? Yes, and he's showing you what God did to folk that were apostate. Uh, in other words, uh, they were in the church in, uh, physically, but their mind was far away. They had no they had no thought about holiness and righteousness what God requires. Amen? Now read that verse again. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once do this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Now, he's talking about Israel's apostasy. Y'all know this story. God delivered them out of Egypt, didn't he? He said, I bore you on eagles' wings, didn't he? Huh? Brought them out with a mighty hand. Uh, and what caused them to fall in the wilderness? Unbelief. Soon as they got out there, Moses was taken too long. Uh, and they built him a calf and said that this was the God that brought us out. Amen? Wickedness. And while Moses was up there getting the Ten Commandments to help them to be a nation, God said, get down here, Moses. You got to go because I'm getting away to white these folk out and I'll get you some new people. Moses made intercession for him. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God, God, God shall out. You know? And, and, and God didn't let them go scot-free. Huh? They, 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 they. God, God told Moses, uh, have them melt that calf down. They put it in some water and they drank it. Then God wiped out, wiped those folk out that, that started the ruckus. He got rid of them. Killed them. Dead. Huh? God is serious about his church. Huh? Remember when the Holy Ghost fell and they had all things common and they sold their goods? And who was that couple? What's that couple name? Ananias and what? Sapphire. Sapphire. Amen? Huh? Lie to the Holy Ghost. Die. Church starting out. Dang. God's serious about his church. Amen? Serious about his church. They lie. Ain't nothing wrong with telling a lie. Mm. A lie key. <laughs> huh? Because, because notice, lies influence people. God hates, when that's why he hates false teachers. They influence others. When you live a hypocritical life, you become a false teacher. God don't want you to be a hypocrite. Yeah. Amen? Amen? All right, let's move on. That ain't what I'm after, but but we get it though. <laughs> Verse six. All right, uh, read that. Read that five again. I will therefore put, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord had saved the people out of the land of Egypt, uh -huh. afterward destroyed them that believed not. Didn't God do that? All right, read read the next verse. So Israel fell, and now we got angelic apostasy. And they fell. Follow? All right, read. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, mm -hmm. giving themselves over to fornication mm -hmm. and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Woo! Now we got pagan worship. 
Apostasy. Apostasy. Amen? Pagan worship. Went out to strange flesh. Huh? Sodom and Gomorrah. Like I said, the thing that God hated about it, they, they were influencing others to walk that life of homosexuality. Amen? And isn't that going on today? Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, it's pressure uh, to look at, uh, to speak out against homosexuality now. You feel funny. Like, who should I say that? Am I, am I correct? What's going to happen? Huh? It ain't like you can just call homosexuality wrong and not feel something about it. I'm being honest with you. You're wondering if you're politically correct. Huh? Huh? God loves everybody. Right, I'll tell you that. God loves everybody. Who are you? <laughs> love is love. But that ain't love. <laughs> Sin. What sex they are. basically stated marriage is between a man and a woman. And when they let that expire, uh, the, the, the White House was lit up in, in rainbow colors. And y'all know what that symbolizes. Yep. Yep. Huh? I can't argue with that. But they trying to take it over. Yeah. And 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 they try to put pressure on us. Like like she said. Um, I remember when it was first happening. 
Pastors, we talked about it. You better get it into your bylaws that you don't uh, marry same-sex couples. Amen. Get it into your, it's in our bylaws. Amen. Or they, they'll come back and sue you. Amen. Pressure. Follow me? Amen. Folk, folk try to pressure you. Apostate. Paganism. That's a form of false worship. As if you ever notice it, uh, they say, I'm a gay man. Why don't you just be a man? Yeah. Put it out there. I'm a, I'm a lesbian. I came out. You follow me? Yeah. So, so, so we got to walk. Got to walk. Huh? They in the church. In the church. Now, when you identify them in the church, I mean you back up off of them. Help me get saved. But let them know that that's wrong. That's not tolerated by God. Am I right? A tendency would be uh, uh, for a preacher or, or for a teacher or for a saint of God. So, oh, they got that problem. I'm not going. I'm not going. I'm, I'm not going to talk about it. You know, you got to talk about it. You follow? Because if you don't talk about it, it'll manifest. It's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. All sin is wrong. How about all sin? <laughs> Amen? All right, read. Eight. Huh? Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. Mm -hmm. Despise dominion and speak evil of dignity. Now here he's talking about the activities of apostate person. The, uh, a person that you people, you got to watch out for that's going to try to influence you. They'll defile your flesh. Amen? They'll, they'll talk to you about sensual, devilish things. To captivate your mind. Take you off focus. Read, read that verse again. Likewise also these filthy dreamers. Now I know it's like filthy dreamers. Defile the flesh. They defile the flesh. Despite the men. Huh? They, they hate God's authority. Hate godly authority. Hate it. That's a red flag. Anybody that's always attacking God's authority, a red flag. Uh, anybody that's attacking authority in the church, red flag. Read. And speak evil of dignity. Uh, uh, those, 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 those people that are in position, leaders, speak evil of them. Watch out for people that don't respect leaders. Huh? Not everybody wrong. Father, read. Yet Michael the archangel, while contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Uh huh. There's not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, "The Lord rebuke thee." Now even Michael had sense enough uh, not to uh, uh, share back words and and uh, 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 how can you say it? Lord help me here, Holy Ghost. Go against the devil's authority, his leadership. He realized that the devil has some leadership, authority. He's saying to you that Michael respected the devil's leadership, got his, uh, his, his marching orders from God, and didn't call the devil, you blue-eyed demon, you wicked so-and-so, but just said, the Lord rebuke me. Huh? Follow? It's like with, uh, 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 what's his name? David. David was chased by Saul. Had opportunity to kill him. But didn't touch God's anointing. You follow? There may be some people that are crooked and evil. Huh? All, as all get out. But don't bring railing accusations against them. They should. They, they could be in leadership. 
Respect leadership. Let God do the vengeance. Keep yourself unspotted, clean, so that when judgment comes, your hands are clean. You with me? Hallelujah. All right, me. Mm -hmm. They speak evil of those things which they know not. Uh -huh. But what they know naturally as brute beasts in those things they corrupt themselves. Now, when you get involved in, in, in that kind of uh, uh, banter, that kind of talk, you're just corrupting yourself. He's still encouraging us. Keep yourself unspotted. Amen? Keep yourself clean. Keep yourself pure. Read. Woe unto them. Uh huh. For they have gone in the way of Cain. Now, he's talking about these false teachers that are trying to influence you. He said, Woe unto them. Anytime you see that woe there, you know trouble is going to happen. Amen? God is going to get them. He says, Woe unto them. They have gone into the way of Cain. Cain killed his brother. Uh, disregarded God. Uh, watch out for people that are killing your brother and that disregard God. Read. And ran greedily after the heir of Balaam uh -huh. for reward and perished in the game saying before. Right. Watch out. Uh, in a nutshell, what he said is watch out for hirelings. Those that are just greedy after filthy lucre. Trying to get money. And we'll do anything for it. Watch out for folk. Read. These are spots in their feasts of charity. Uh huh. When they feast with you. Yeah. Feeding themselves without fear. Without fear? Clouds they are without water. Without water? No, without no, the wind. no, no anointing. Full of spirits. Those winds are spirits. Read. Trees whose fruit withereth. Uh huh. Without fruit. Without fruit. Twice dead. How many times dead? Five. Oh my God. He's trying to put emphasis on it. Read. Plucked up by the roots. Uh huh. Now, they're plucked up by the roots because they were once in it. But turned their back from it. Y'all with me? Watch out for folk like that. Watch out for backsliders. Now, I'm, I'm saying, I'm, I'm being honest. Keep it. Love them. Love them to death. Huh? Pray for them. But you know why? 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 I mean, Uh huh. Wandering stars. My God. The womb is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Now, they was once saved, but then they turned their hearts away from God. Now, they're in a state now where they're reserved for darkness. For how long? Forever. Watch out for them. Read. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of thee, saying, Behold, uh -huh. the Lord coming with ten thousands of his saints, mm -hmm. to execute judgment upon all, yes. and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all, of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed. Now hold on, read that particular statement again. To execute judgment upon all. Uh huh. Now, he keeps hitting on ungodliness. He's talking about people that, 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 that have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Watch out for ungodly people. Amen? We know sinners, don't. Ungodly people, they ain't smoking, they ain't drinking, Huh? Hopefully they ain't fornicating. They doing all the devilish stuff. 
trying to steer you away from God. Watch. Watch your relationships. Watch who has influence of over you. <laughs> Don't sleep with the enemy. <laughs> Why? Y'all with me? Why? Be? To execute judgment upon all and to commence all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed. Be. And of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Now notice, he said ungodly sinners. So we know what a sinner is. Read. These are murderers. Uh -huh. Now notice, this is what they do. This is how you can tell them. They murmur. What's a murmur? Complaining about everything. Not solution people. Murmurers. Read. Complainers. Complainers. Walking after their own lusts. Huh? Walking, living after their own lusts. Evil desires. Watch out for folks like that. Read. And their mouth speaking great swelling words. Oh, they can put testimonies together. Oh, they can make you great and precious promises. Have you believed in that stuff? <laughs> I know a little guy. He telling me great stories. And it just the thought came to my mind. Man, don't believe that stuff. That stuff ain't real. He's just talking. <laughs> you follow me? Amen. Amen. Folk want to make themselves look important. All right. All right. You with me? Mm -hmm. They got millions of dollars living on your block. <laughs> Y'all catch that later. <laughs> Saying, oh God, 
Now I got to tell the saints. Huh? I got to tell my wife. I'm going to lose everything. Huh? In that, in, that, in that dream, God let me see everything. Father, showed me everything. Woke up sweating. Crying. Distraught. Father, uh, 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 uh. you know, young saint, I'm like, Lord, I got to go give me some prayer. Went and told, told the bishop. Bishop said, well, son, you need to go on you a 30-day chain fast. 30-day chain fast. 30-day <laughs> chain fast. Risk benefit. God showing you something that's in you. You don't purge it. You lose it. Risk benefit. I went on the 30 day chain fact. Ain't had a dream like that shit. Follow? Go. Risk benefit. Follow? We can't ignore the obvious. When God is trying to show you something, don't ignore it. Y'all with me? Risk benefit. You can't afford to lose out on this thing. We used to say, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Huh? And just one day with Jesus is too much to lose. You can't lose out on this. It's too close. Huh? Jesus can come at any time. What, what, what I believe, this is my belief, is what's holding is coming is, is he's waiting for the kingdom to be preached. And the kingdom is being preached. You hear everywhere people talking about the kingdom. People talking about the kingdom. People talking about the kingdom. About the kingdom. So now even that prophecy has been fulfilled. Father, everywhere. Jesus is soon to come. Don't allow what God has given you to be taken away. It ain't worth it. Amen? All right, read, read, Pastor. Verse 18. Uh huh. Jude 118. Jude 118. How that they told you there should be marvelous in the last time uh -huh. who should walk after their own ungodly lusts? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But ye, beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So he's telling us now how to keep ourselves uh, in these last days. He says, but ye, beloved, do what? Building up yourself. Build up yourself. On your most holy faith, huh? Huh? praying on, in the Holy Ghost. Notice, he, when he says, on your most holy faith, He's talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Build yourself up on this gospel. How do you build yourself up on this? You got to feed yourself this gospel. A steady diet of Jesus. A steady diet of the faith that is in Christ. A steady diet of the healing power that is in Jesus. A steady diet of the anointing that was upon Jesus. Uh, a steady diet of the great and precious promises that God has made you concerning Jesus. Uh, it's Jesus. It's got to be Jesus. 
That's how you gotta build yourself up. Uh, to when people talk about you or when people talk to you, it's all about Jesus. They spend any amount of time with you, huh? You saying praise the Lord. Huh? You you talking about the Lord. Huh? Something about Jesus. That's how you gotta build yourself up. Huh? And notice, he said, pray. Huh? You gotta pray about Jesus. Uh, that's how you get them in you. You gotta pray about this word that's concerning Jesus. Huh? When you pray, pray about Jesus. You know, I know we want a house, I know we want a car, I know we want clothes, I know we want healing, I know we want this and that, but we gotta have Jesus. Huh? He knows you have need of those things, but you gotta have Jesus. What profit of a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? And what will you give in exchange for your soul? Huh? It's got to be about Jesus. Your lifestyle got to be about Jesus. Paul put it this way. Set your affections on things above where Christ sitteth at the right hand of the Father. You got to set your affections. What you desire. So a man uh, 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 thinketh in his heart, so is he. Uh, where is your treasure? Uh, that's where I'll find you, wherever your treasure is. Amen? Amen. So you got to build yourself up. That takes work, dedication. Huh? That takes a process. You got to have a process for building yourself up. You got to have a plan for building yourself up. Amen? Y'all with me? All right, read. I got to let y'all go. I got three more minutes. Now notice, notice. He said, build yourself up on your most holy faith. Doing what? You got to pray in the Holy Pray in the anointing. Uh, wait. If you come, you drive. Wait till you get anointed. Don't just get up. Wait till you feel something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, stay, stay right there. You know, it always helps. Before you come to prayer, you think it's spiritual. Amen. Huh? Yes, sir. Huh? Am I right? Amen. Stay in his presence. Huh? Keep your mind stayed on him. Yes, Lord. Uh, it's important. Why? Because the Holy Ghost makes intercession for you. Yes. Uh, the Holy Ghost can be touched with the feelings of your infirmity. Yes. The Holy Ghost knows your weaknesses. The Holy Ghost can get a prayer through. <laughs> uh, he knows. You praying for one thing, the Holy Ghost said, uh, uh you need this. You need this. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost knows. Uh, and when you, especially when you get down into the unknown tongues, uh, stuff happens. It happens. And when you praying in them tongues, and just one word keeps coming out of your mouth. Look that word up. See what it means. Go to some Hebrew and some Greek to see what that word means. The Holy Ghost is intelligible. It's a language. Come on here, somebody. See what it means. Search it out. Huh? All right. I feel good. All right, read. What's that? The next one? Keep yourselves in the love of God. Now notice, you got to keep yourself in the love of God. God is what? Love. Amen? Am I right? Huh? So you got to keep yourself in God's love. Walk in his agape. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Read. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, looking for Christ to show you mercy. In order for him to show you mercy, you've got to be merciful. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall do what? Obtain mercy. You got to walk in love, and you got to walk in mercy. Read. The mercy of our Lord, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ uh -huh. unto eternal life. Now I'm looking for. I'm looking for eternal life. When, when he's about looking for it, a saint of God has it, 
but you're looking for the manifestation of it. What I mean by the manifestation of it is you're looking for this mortal to put on immortality. Amen? I'm looking for that. I'm looking to be changed in a moment and a twinkling of an eye. Am I right? I'm looking for this, 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 this body here. Uh, if I gotta go by the grave, I'm looking for it to be resurrected. Y'all with me? I'm looking for that. Keep that in your mind. Keep that in your heart. Keep that in your desires. And if you do that, then it would sway all your decision making. People who got get caught up by the devil, they 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 allow them to slip where they're all in you or on you because your mind isn't on him. In other words, let me say it this way. You go on a fast, and then while you're on your fast, you start eating some chicken wings. Uh, and then after you say, oh, my God, I'm on a fast. What happened? You let your mind slip. Don't let your mind slip. Amen. Huh? You, you dabble into something. You into something. And then Jesus comes. You went to your desire, and then Jesus come. Yes. Ooh, that's too late. Yes. Rapture should happen like that, that's too late. And then we sing that song. Is my labor in vain? Yes, your labor will be in vain. Huh? If you allow it to happen like that. Uh, all your prayers in vain. Huh? Is it all in vain? Yes! yes. <laughs> because up the road is not eternal gain. It's eternal damnation. So you don't you don't wanna you don't wanna get caught up. Y'all follow? Yeah. I'm over a few minutes, but go ahead, go ahead, Pastor. We're gonna get that. And of some have compassion, making a difference. Now, now, now. Oh. He's telling us, have compassion on people. Make a difference. I'm getting too excited. But have compassion on people. Make a difference. Amen. Amen. You as a child of God, you have an opportunity to make a difference. How, how people know us by the love that we show one toward another. How people know us by our chase conversation. Amen? Read. And others say with fear, uh -huh. pulling them out of the fire. Now, pull some people out of the fire. Hating them with the garments spotted by the flesh. Now, you don't want them to be spotted. Read. You want to save them. This, an analogy of this, this particular passage or this particular verse would be our brother Nehemiah. Nehemiah inquired about how the well-being of his brothers were in Jerusalem when they were supposed to build that wall. And when he found out that they weren't prospering, doing what they needed to do, he immediately fasted. He immediately prayed. And then he went to the king where he could have been killed uh, to plead that he may go over there to help them. Yeah. That's compassion. See some people in need, sacrifice yourself to help them. Yeah. That spirit, that anointing should be in the church. Y'all with me? Yeah. Hallelujah. All right, read. Now, now this is one of the greatest benedictions ever. He said, now unto him that is able to do what? He's able to keep you from falling. Huh? He was after people who were teaching and preaching a watered down gospel. Huh? Saying, once saved, always saved. But he was showing you, uh, the children of Israel, when they was coming out of Egypt, they lost it. Uh, he was showing you that the, the angels, they lost it. Huh? Huh? Cain, he lost it. Uh, you don't want to lose it. Am I right? Amen. Now unto him 
that is able to keep you from what? Oh. He's able to keep you from falling. Yeah. Read. And to present you fallen. He's able to present you what? Oh. Without sin. Faultless. Amen? Don't let nobody tell you you got to live a sinful life. Huh? Uh, loose here. You can live in victory. You can walk in victory. Am I right? Hallelujah. Read. Before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Now you can have great joy. Huh? Huh? Exceeding joy. With Jesus. Am I right? Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord should be your strength. Read. To the only wise God. Now notice, he's giving glory to the only wise God. There's no other God but our God. Huh? There's no other deliverer but our deliverer. There's no other help but our help. Amen? There's no other choice but holiness. Without the which, no man shall see the Lord. I'll be reading. Before in majesty. Now notice, he said, be glory. Uh, that's like what Jesus said uh, when, he, when he ended his prayer. Uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Uh, uh, on earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Y'all remember that prayer? To him be glory and honor. Read. Dominion and power. Dominion and power. Both now and ever. Both now and how long? Ever. Forever. Amen. Amen. Give God a praise. <laughs> I'm encouraged. Let's be encouraged, saints. Huh? Watch out for foolish people. Watch out for foolish conversations. Amen? Amen? Watch out for folk trying to be with you. Uh, turn you from your own steadfastness. Watch out for people that's coming against your leadership. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Watch out. Amen? Watch out for spots in your feet. <laughs> Hallelujah. People that's trying to turn you back. All right, brother, Minister Quinn, won't you take the offering? Amen. We thank God for all those that are tuning in, listening to us on tonight. We pray that God will continue to bless you and help you. In Jesus' name.